at the end of spring and the beginning of summer, clusters of plain white pear flowers, such as clouds like snow and the red braid of Forbidden City, set off into interest. Hi everyone, here is Yunjin, China. Today, I will talk to you about the Forbidden City in Beijing. The Palace Museum is located in the center of Beijing, China. It is 753 meters wide from east to west and 961 meters long from north to south, covering an area of 723.6 thousand square meters. It is surrounded by a 10 meter high wall and a 52 meter wide moat. The wall on all sides each set a gate, south Meridian Gate, North Shenwu Gate, around Donghua Men, Xihua Gate, which Meridian Gate for the entrance to visit, Shenwu Gate for the expert to visit. The total area of ancient buildings in the city is about 160,000 square meters. There are 9 beams, 18 columns, and 72 ridges among the fork, which describe the complexity of its structure. The layout of the whole palace is strict and orderly. The layout and shape are designed and built in strict accordance with the feudal ritual system and the theory of yin and yang and five elements, reflecting the supreme authority of the emperor. The first half of the Forbidden City is centered on the Hall of Supreme Harmony, the Hall of Zhonghe and the Hall of Baohe, supplemented by the Hall of Wenhua and the Hall of Valor in the east and west collectively known as the Outer Dynasty. It is the palace for the Ming and the Qing emperors to conduct government affairs, hold court meetings and other important celebrations. The three main halls are built on a three-story white marble platform with a height of 8.13 meters. The later sleeping area, all known as Nating, is a general term for the royal living area in the north of the Forbidden City. Here lay with the Emperor Empress Qianqin Palace, two palaces of earthly tranquility as the central, east and west distribution of the Emperor Temple, and the Empresses lived east of the six, west six, and the prince are living east of five, west five yards of Qian Palace, etc. To the east is Ningshou Palace area, the courtyard of Taishang Palace built by Emperor Qianlong, and to the west is the Ning Palace, Shou Kang Palace, Shou An Palace, and other areas for the Empress Dowagers and the Tophis. The Hall of Tai He is the supreme golden hall in the Forbidden City, which is known to the folk as the Golden Palace in the palaces, where the Emperor holds important ceremonies. First built in the Yongle of Ming Dynasty, early 15th century, the co four corners each have 10 auspicious beads. The designer of the Forbidden City thought it would show the Emperor's majesty and intimidate the world. The rear nating is deep and compact, so the six palaces of the east and west are self-contained, each with palace walls, relative arrangement orderly. After the Manchu dynasty established its capital in Beijing, it was renamed today, implying a harmonious world. The Hall of Supreme Harmony was rebuilt and preserved in Kangxi years of the Qin dynasty. Zhonghe Temple, Ming Yongle, 18 years AD, 1920, built. After three fires, the existing for tomorrow, seven years AD, 1627, reconstruction. The first name of the temple, Huanggai Temple, later changed in the temple, Qing Shunzhi, two years, 1645 AD, called Zhonghe Temple. Baohe Temple was built in the Ming Yongle, 18 years, AD 1420. The first name, Jing Shen Temple, during the Jia Jing period, it suffered a fair and was renamed Jia Jianji Hall after being rebuilt. In the second year of Shunzhi in the Qing Dynasty, it was changed to the Hall of Baohe. The plaque of the Hall of Preserving Harmony, Wang Jian Youji, is the Emperor Pan of Qianlong, called out Ji Zi Ho Fan. The Emperor rebuilds its greatness. A couplet is found in the Hall of Preserving Harmony. Zhao Cui, 
My hair shrunk, curtain inherits forever. Heavens heard dissent, but all ministers and concubines of all states should think of eternal protection. The top of the hall of Bao He is in the style of double eaves and xie shan. The interior of the hall follows the French style of reduced columns in the Song and Yuan dynasties. The space is open, built in the Jia Jing year of the Ming dynasty. It is located on the west wide of the. Qianlong Palace of the Inner Court. In the Qing Dynasty, eight emperors lived here successfully, and they used to be the two emperors dowagers of Cixi and Cixian. The Qianjin Palace was built in the 18th year of Yongle in the Ming Dynasty, 1920, and the existing building was built in the third year of Jiaqing in the Qing Dynasty, 1798. Jiao Tai Hall was built during the Ming Jiaqing period and rebuilt during Shunzhi, Kangxi, and Jiaqing years. Kunming Palace was built in the 18th year of Yongle in Ming Dynasty, 1420 A.D. The palace of the empress in the Ming Dynasty was rebuilt in the style of Qingning Palace in Shengjing in the 12th year of Shunzhi in Qing Dynasty, 1655 A.D. The four rooms at the west end are used as places for Samanism to worship gods, and the two rooms at the east. And at the bridal chambers of the emperor's wedding, the three emperors Kangxi, Tongzhi, and Guangxu, who ascended the throne when they were young, all got married here. The Wenhua Palace was originally the emperor's palace during the Tianshun and Chenghua years of Ming Dynasty. Before the prince became the emperor, he took office in Wenhua Palace. In the 15th year of Jiajin, 1536, it was changed to the emperor's. Palace. It was rebuilt in 2004, and it was the place where the emperors of Ming and Qing dynasties feasted. Wu Ying Hall was built in the early Ming Dynasty and is located west of Xihe Gate of Wai Chao. Forty years after Emperors Kangxi, Wu Ying Hall published a large number of books. The pictures were perfect and exquisite, and the quality of the books was very high. Located in Taihe Men Square, there are five blocks in total. Single hall arch coupon type. In the south of the square, a bowl-shaped Jingshui River flows from west to east, which is so-called Inner Jingshui Bridge. This is the largest, most spectacular, and the most beautiful group of stone bridge in the Forbidden City. In the middle is the Royal Road Bridge, which was reserved for the emperor. On the east and west sides is the Wang Gong Bridge, which is used for the passage of members of the royal family. And princes. There are great bridges on both sides for officials above Grade Three to walk. The function is the same as Wai Jingshui Bridge in front of Tiananmen Square Palace Museum in Beijing, also known as Forbidden City, was the imperial palace of the Ming and Qing dynasties from 1368 to 1911 A.D. in China. According to the ancient Chinese astrology theory, Zi Wei Yuan, the North Star, is located. In the middle of the sky, where the Emperor of Heaven lived. Therefore, the Forbidden City is also called the Zijin City. Zhu Di, the third Emperor of the Ming Dynasty, decided to move the capital to Beijing after he seized the throne. Construction of the palace began in AD 1406, and it was completed in the 18th year of Yongle in the Ming Dynasty, 1420 AD. In 1911, the Revolution of 1911. Overthrew China's last feudal monarch, the Qing Dynasty. In 1926, the Qing Dynasty abolished the Emperor Xuantong Emperor, and the last Emperor Puyi was expelled from the palace. After the victory of the revolution in 1911, the Qing Dynasty government announced its abdication, and the palace show should have been nationalized. However, according to the preferential treatment conditions for the Qing Dynasty formulated by the Provisional Revolution. Revolutionary government at that time, Emperor Puyi was allowed to temporarily reside in the palace, that is, the back bed at the rear of the Forbidden City. The government at 
that time decided to move the cultural relics of Rehe Chengde Palace, Chengde Mountain Resort, and the Shenjing Shenyang Forbidden City to the former dynasty part of the front half of the Forbidden City, and established the Antiquities Exhibition Center in 1940. Puyi lived in the palace and has been plotting restoration with the remnants of the Qing Dynasty, and has stolen a large number of cultural relics from the palace in the name of rewards, bonds, repairs, etc., which has aroused a serious concern from all walks of life. According to the book Investigation Report of the Qing Dynasty Rehabilitation Committee, published in 1925, the cultural relics left by the Qing court included three dynasty ancient jade ware, famous calligraphy painting of the Tang, Song, Yuan, and the Ming Dynasty, Song and Yuan, ceramics, enamel, lacquer ware, gold and silver utensils, bamboo and wood homes, gold and bronze religious statues, as well as a large number of emperors, queens, and concubines' costumes, clothing, and furniture. It can be described as golden and jade, rare treasures, and the veils of the world all gather here. In addition, there are a large number of books and archives. To this end, the Palace Museum consists of Antiquities Museum, a library, and a document library, which respectively organize manpower to continue to sort out the cultural relics, open up exhibition rooms in the palace, hold various exhibitions, edit and publish various publications, material, and conduct publicity. The work has been carried out vigorously. The humanities are gathered, and it was very prosperous for a while. After a year of intense preparations, on October 10, 1925, a grand ex establishment ceremony was held in the square in front of Qianqingmen, and the whole country was telegraphed to announce the official establishment of the Palace Museum. After the founding of the People's Republic of China, the staff of the Palace Museum in Beijing devoted themselves to work with a new spirit, pulling weeds, dredging rivers, cleaning up trash. In early 1950s, 25,000 cubic meters of rubbish for hundreds of years had been removed from the palace, and the courtyard has been renewed since then. The Palace Museum has formulated the maintenance policy of focusing on protection, key repair, comprehensive planning, and gradual implementation. Brilliant! All our palace in the courtyard have installed lightning protection facilities and built a fire prevention and anti-safe monitoring system and a high-voltage fire fighting water supply pipe network with huge investments so that this ancient palace building has been more effectively protected and better highlights the former imperial city style. The Ming and Qing dynasties were the last two dynasties in the history of China feudal dynasties. The court of the two dynasties refers not only to the imperial palace used by the emperors of the Ming and Qing dynasties, but also to the pronoun of the supreme ruling court of the Ming and Qing. The history of the Ming and Qing courts for more than 500 years as part of the entire history of these two dynasties to show people the past 500 years through research on the activities of the emperors and queens, including hierarchy, power struggle, religious sacrifices, food and clothing, and other issues. Colorful and cruel life picture of the post-Ming and Qing emperors also reveal the influence of the supreme rule, ruling power, wars and deeds on the rise and falls of the nation and the trends of social life. Since the Ming and Qing courts were the supreme ruling center with a highly complete feudal system, and your events often revolved around the inheritance and safety of imperial power. For example, the civil engineering change in which the Orthodox Emperor of the Ming Dynasty was captured, the Ren Yin Palace change in which the Jia Jing Emperor was assassinated by a maid, the battle for Sanwan Temple in the early Qing Dynasty when the kings and ministers established imperial power, and Xin Yu Cope in which the Empress Dowager Cixi sought power in the late Qing Dynasty, etc. The Ming and Qing Dynasties draw from the rich cultural accumulation of the past dynasty 
least on this basis, there is a general trend of summarizing traditional culture. In the Qin Dynasty, the activities of the supreme rulers using cultural activities as a means to achieve political goals were strengthened, and the cultural exchanges between China and foreign countries were developing in depth and depth. As a result, philosophy, religion, academic thought, literature, and art are diverse and brilliant. However, traditional feudal education as an important way to inherit culture is still going forward. The relatively stable customs were influenced by the different ruling nations and the religious environments of the Ming and Qing dynasties, especially in some differences in court customs. By the end of the Qing dynasty, social mutation and transformation were reflected in various fields of culture. The new changes appeared accordingly. Walking into the palace museum, you will walk along the central aspects and you can feel the broad mind of the prosperous dynasty from the ups and downs of the architectural movement. You can capture the gentle atmosphere of court life through the exquisite furnishing of the six east and west palaces and the elegant pattern of the inner courtyard. From the yellow gauze curtain rolled up in the east warm pavilion of Yanxi Hall, we can trace the historical vicissitudes of the Chinese nation's internal and external bubbles a hundred years ago. Here is the end of this program. See you next time.